Hello, everyone. Go ahead and say hi. We're going to give you a few minutes for people to sign on. Today, we're going to cover all kinds of adhesives. I'm going to start with tape runners, but we're going to talk about liquid glue, glue sticks, um, specialty glues, all kinds of glues, and what to use them for and when, and which I would recommend. I've been paper crafting and crafting for over 20 years, and I've tried every single glue that I could ever get my hands on. So I'm going to show you what I recommend and what I don't and why. Let me know, hi Renee, let me know what kind of crafting you do. What do you usually, what are you usually trying to glue? Tell me in the comments and I can, or if you've ever had trouble with a, a certain kind of adhesive or shout out to what your favorites are. Obviously I'm not gonna go through every single glue that's ever been invented ever. <laughs> that would take all day and I don't have enough room in my house to hold them all <laughs> but I do have a lot and I'm gonna show you all different kinds and what's good and what's what's not great so and what I would use them for we're gonna start with tape runners I'll give you guys just a couple more minutes to log on and then we'll get going Oh, hey, Lynn, I see you. Hi. Yes, Renee, I, the camera's working good. <laughs> I know, I've had my issues. <laughs> but I think I, I think I got it now. Um, card maker who uses ATG gun and Zig2 squeeze. Yeah, that's good. Can you read me the rest of that comment, please, Lynn? And you want to know what's the best adhesive for adhering ribbon to cardstock. I will, we will cover that for sure. And vellum paper, what works best? Yes, that is a very common question. We'll cover that one too. Okay, we're going to start with runners. I'll go ahead and get started. Go ahead and keep, keep your questions coming and I'll have somebody read them to me later. Okay. Um, I cut, I pre-cut some paper and mostly black so we could, I can show you guys, um, <laughs> highlight my sticky pen <laughs> so I can, so you can actually see the adhesive. Hopefully it can be hard to see some adhesives. So let's talk about runners. Um, if you have, or sometimes people refer to these as uh, snail runners, right? Or snail tape, but essentially it's a double sided tape that is in some kind of applicator that you roll along like a little toy car and the adhesive comes out like magic. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna go over a, a few of these. Um, let's talk about Tombow first. This is the original Tombow runner right here, the blue one. And then there is a pink one and a green one and the Tombow Plus. Um, Sometimes there's a little confusion about these and what's what's what. So the original blue one here is a permanent double-sided adhesive. And when using a runner, no matter what kind or what brand, with one exception, which we'll get to, um, you want to, when you're using a, roll, a runner, you want to press down, down, and then pull in the direction you want to lay the, the tape down, okay? I don't know if you can hear that noise, but it's the tape coming out. I'm gonna bring this a little closer so you can see the tape. Yeah. So that is a permanent adhesive on, in the blue and it's a solid tape line. And um, the trick to any adhesive runner is the end. So you press down, roll along, and when you wanna stop, you make a check mark move. So you're making a check mark and that breaks the tape I have witnessed 
This is gonna hurt some people that you know better, but I have witnessed many a folk do this. And you just wasted a whole lot of tape because you're only getting, in fact, let me do it on this piece. Okay, do you see how we didn't get the full adhesive and we got stringing and gloopers at the ends and the, and the beginnings? And it rolled all up in here and it gunks up this thing, making it more and more likely to get stringy. Also, I see people do this, so they're lifting up. And when you do that, it strings. Do you see all that stringiness? And it gums this up. So you're wasting a lot of tape and you're not getting precision application and you're gumming this up. So if you check your runners, if they're full of gum, you want you can clean those off. And the proper way to use a runner is to press down, roll along, and when you want to stop, make that check mark move. And that gives you a clean break. Can you see that break right there? Mm hmm. Yeah, so that who just learned something? <laughs> That's how you use a tape runner, is making that break at the end. That's very important. So let's talk specifically about Tombow. The Tombow tape runner, when you buy one of these, you're actually buying this part. Don't throw this part away. This is the runner itself. This little gear mechanism is what actually makes it work. This is just simply the refill. Uh, so many times people buy only the refill and then say, this doesn't work at all. That's because you only have half of it. You have to have the runner first. Buy the runner once and then never throw this part away. You can just put a new refill on and they simply just snap together. Super easy. Okay. So the Tombow Runner is also available in this pink color. It's not only pink, but it is a different application of the adhesive. It's the exact same permanent adhesive, except for the pink one comes out in little dots. I don't know. Oh, I'm at the end. Good. You can watch me refill. But you can, can you see the dots? There we go. Kind of a hexagon kind of a shape. Yes. So, so this one just ran out. Do you see what happened here? That's perfect timing. I did not plan that. <laughs> so you can buy refills either in, in the blue and the pink, either in a single or in a three pack. And this, is, like I say, this is simply the refill. There's no bottom. So you remove this paper thing and throw that away. You pull off the used one. See, it's totally, totally used. This is done. And then your new one will snap onto your old cassette frame. Okay? And then they have this little door here that you can force all the way open when you're not using it. And then try to keep that closed if you just, if you keep it like with other um, crafting supplies, because like glitter and dust and stuff can get in there. But just leave that open when you're using it. But the advantage to the little dots or hexagon shapes, can you see? I'm turning the light. Can you see that? What makes this one awesome is that it, you can you can go in an arc or in circles, which is very difficult to do with a tape, with a solid tape, because it doesn't like to turn. I'm trying really hard to make it turn. I don't know if you can see that. See how I didn't get, on the solid tape, I didn't get full, adhe full adhesive layout, and on the dots I did. So the dots make it easy to go around shaped things. The other thing that's great about the dots is that you can go right on the very edge of something because the glue will only stick to where there's paper to stick to. So the rest of this adhesive is on my mat and I can just rub that right off, which is awesome. The other great thing about the dots, like I say, it only sticks to where there's paper to stick to. So if you per, if you prefer a tape runner or the ease and the less mess of a tape runner, but you're stamp or you're trying to adhere something that is very intricate, like an intricate die cut, but you like a tape runner, this is the answer for you because it will just it will just go wherever there is paper to stick to. The rest of the glue will go down on your mat or your table or whatever, and you can just rub it right off if you get to it right away. This is permanent, so when it sets up, it is be it does become very, very sticky. Not impossible to remove, but more difficult. But when it's still wet, you can rub it right off, even off of your paper. So I'll rub off the one that I did the whole edge. I'm just rubbing it strictly with my finger, and it is totally, all that glue is totally gone. 
Isn't that cool? Okay, so if you if you like this Tombow, you're gonna really like this Tombow. If you already have this one, you don't need to buy a new bottom. You can just buy the refills because you can mix and match. All you need to know is whatever's on the top, whatever color's on top, that's what it was, that's what's inside. So I've put the pink on the blue body. I'm gonna have dots. See, I'm saving you money already. <laughs> I got you, I got you. Okay. So then there's the green one. The green is a solid tape like the blue one is, but it is temporary. This is for when you wanna make something temporarily stick down. So this is like a post-it note kind of sticky. It, it has a very, very light tack. I, it's hard to show you how little it is sticking, um, but it is, did you see that? I blew that off my fingers. So I'm gonna stick it to my fingers. And I just blew on it. <laughs> so yeah, a, a, a little gust of wind is gonna blow that stuff everywhere. But it is good for a, a quick temporary hold. In what case would I use this? If, let's say I'm scrapbooking and I'm not really sure where I want stuff to go, I'm just gonna kinda lightly tack stuff down and see if I like it or not. I might use it in that scenario. Or if I am, fussy cutting a mask for stamping. I might use this on the back to then mask out what I fussy cut so that I can ink and stamp over it and then take this off. Those would be the two scenarios where I would use it, but it is, it's like a post-it note kind of sticky. So if that gives you a good analogy, it's, it's very light. Um, how often do I use it? Almost never. <laughs> so if I was going to recommend one of these three, it is this one for sure, because it's all the strength of this one. Um, but it is has those dots, so it's, it's multi-purpose. I can use it for just big, big flat areas like this one if I wanted to, or I can use it on the edges of things, or I can use it on shaped things, or I can use it on die cut or lacy punch outs, that kind of stuff. So if I was gonna recommend one, it'd be the pink. There's one more Tombow, well, there's another Tombow runner, and that's this guy. This is the newer Tombow, the Tombow Permanent Plus. This one isn't, you don't see this everywhere, at least not yet, <laughs> but it does have some advantages over the original. It's the exact same tape, but if you use this one, you'll swear you're getting way more tape or that it's way stickier. The reason why is because the liner that the tape is on is a better formula than this one is that just glides off of the, the runner that the sticky is on better. Also, it has a way better mechanism for starting and stopping. So where this one, these kind have the little door on there. Do you see that? The little trap door. They have, let me see if you can see this. There you go. Right here, they have these little thumb things, got, which seems like a good idea because it makes it easy for you to grab and close, but you accidentally open them all the time or they catch on that stuff and they fall off. Like this one totally fell off. So this one is different in that it doesn't have, get that close. So it doesn't have that little thumb um, catch there, but you can grab it and push it down and keep it, keep it closed. But the great thing is, but a lot of people don't know, you don't need to do that. This will work with a door closed. Yeah, it works with the door closed. <laughs> Let me show you how it works. So just like the others, you push down and pull across and make the check mark move. But did you notice a difference? It's subtle. Let me let me go back to this one again. This one needs to, the tape needs to make a little bit, like a half revolution around this little rolly guy right here. This one has a, almost the same width of a rolly guy, but when you press down on this, I'm gonna hold this like this so you can see. When you press down on this, see that? It moves. It is a rocker mechanism. See these, this one? I'm gonna press on this one. It does not move. This rocker mechanism means that wherever you place this little roller is exactly where it starts. If I wanna start right there, it starts right there. If I wanna start back here, it starts back here. If I wanna start right on the edge, I put it on the edge. It advances the tape forward, that half revolution, and then starts going as you pull backwards, giving you absolute control and getting that precisely right on the very edge, let me turn this in the light. Can you see? 
right on the very edge of your paper if you wanted to. And that lets you use 100% of the adhesive. The so the and then I'll use it with the door closed so you can see. See, awesome. So you don't have to worry about that little door remembering to close it or losing it or anything like that. The other advantage to this one over the original is how the how the how it refills. So on the back, you notice it has some instructions. This one has no instructions, <laughs> and it has this little lever. And what that is, is a locking mechanism that locks your refill in place. So it can't jiggle. This one, do you hear that? It jiggles. This one, no jiggle. It's because the refill has been locked in place. That keeps your line straight. It keeps, it helps avoid the gumming up and the stringing as well as the check mark move. Don't forget that. The other thing about this guy is that you have to open it in order to refill it. So the re so your cartridge is a lot more obvious. This guy is the runner. This is a refill. So it's a lot. Uh, the other kind, so many people throw away the runner by mistake, and they don't realize what they're doing. And also, a lot less waste, right? Because I'm not throwing away a whole half of a runner every time I need to change it. And it goes in just as easy. You just slide it in there and close the door. Okay. And so of all of these for now that I showed you for uh, as a runner, the way runners work, this is my favorite, less waste. I get to use all of it. That's a great adhesive. Um, however, out there in the world, it is harder to find. At Craft Warehouse, you're covered. We got you. You can get this. Um, but these other Tombos are a little easier to find. If So if it's any, if, if I can't shop at Craft Warehouse, then I'm going to be really glad that now I can buy online. Yay! <laughs> yes, and we just added a bunch of this adhesive to online, so you can find it there on our online store. But uh, this, this is what I would still pick if, um, you because sometimes you need a refill right away. This will be easier to find refills for. Probably only at craft stores, though. You're not going to find this at like a this particular dot adhesive as easily at an office supply store. It depends on your store. But this one, of as far as runners go and the mechanisms and the way it works, this is a great runner. Okay. That's Tombow, with exception of the Tombow Extreme. And it lives up to its name. In fact, you really shouldn't use it for paper because <laughs> it is so extreme. This tape is not for paper. I, you can use it on paper. But the one paper I would use it on is like a watercolor paper that you've already watercolored on and you haven't been able to get the warp out of it and you need it to lay flat, this would be a good option. But really, this is really for more like um, burlap, ribbon, fabric, wood, cork, that kind of stuff, that hard glue things where maybe you don't want to use a hot glue or you don't want to use a liquid glue, you still want the convenience of a runner. But this is extreme stuff and it is twice as thick as a regular runner so that check mark move doesn't work on this one and you want to go very slowly when you run this one out and it is extra uh oh I touched it uh, I touched it for me <laughs> this is like the um, super glue of tape runners <laughs> can you take this off me ah uh. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, it's super. <laughs> you took some skin with that. <laughs> hey, that's why I did it like a band-aid. <laughs> it's not, it's not, it's stronger than a band-aid. <laughs> anyway, this would be a great one if you're wanting to put down ribbon or burlap even. And you know how burlap is, has all the, the fuzzy fibers want to come off. This will hold it. It will hold it onto glass, it'll hold it onto wood, it'll hold it onto paper. Um, very, very strong. Don't waste it on paper or your skin. <laughs> Use it for super hard glue things that you want the, that you, where you want the advantage and the ease of use of a runner. That is extreme. That's right, Lynn, it is extreme. Okay, that's the Tombow family. Now I'll show you a couple of others. This one is from Doris and we sell it in a six pack. This is your value tape runner. You get what you pay for. 
So um, as a card maker, no, this is not my favorite. It's doable, yes, but it's a long-term hold, not that great. Um, but this is a great option if you are doing um, something with a lot of people that is not an important project. So for example, you might be doing a project where you're having your a bunch of family or friends help you put together um, wedding invitations. You're gonna want your wedding invitations to stay together and look nice and be and help be held together. Don't skimp on the glue. Don't use this one for that. But if you're having to get together with um, say some kids and they're just making some fun art projects, um, this is a good option. Or a, you know you have a Girl Scout troop doing something or um, you're just playing around. Or it is okay for um, uh, scrapbooking too if your scrapbooking is gonna be inside of a um, protective sleeve or something like that but I this is not my favorite for paper to paper but it is it, it works it just doesn't hold for a long time so but it, the value is great so you're, you get six these are not refillable they are permanent they have this removable lid and you just run them down like that and it's a solid adhesive okay so it works like the other adhesives do it's just not refillable so in the long run if you only exclusively use this, you do have a lot more waste because you have to throw this whole thing away. There's no refills for it, but it's, it's, it's okay on the stickiness. It holds better. It holds good, pretty good for the first few days, but after that, it just starts to kind of fall apart. Honestly, I, as a card maker, I honestly would not buy this one. See, I can easily apply this apart and all the adhesive is left over here. I didn't get any paper from this side. It's just not that it's just not that strong of, it, of an adhesive so it's okay it depends on what you're using it for if it's for kids or like i say it's going to be protected in a scrapbook where you won't lose um anything because it'll hold in there that's better but a card when you make cards the first thing people do is pick it here's a card i made a while ago the first thing people do is like oh wow you made this how did you glue that together oh <laughs> so don't use this guy am i right <laughs> I mean, if they start peeling it apart, I guess this, I guess they just, what I tell myself is they just are so enamored by this beautiful card that can't believe that it was handmade. That's what I tell myself so I don't get mad at them and scold them. <laughs> okay, the next two I want to talk about are also um, affordable and that those are these two here. They're both only $1.96. And they are um, also not refillable. They're crafters tape runners. This one is what they call the scrapbook one. And this is what they call the crafter one. Um, but either case, they're acid free. They're photo safe. They're non-toxic. If you're looking for a valued one of these three, I would get this red one. It is the strongest of the three for sure. So if you're looking for a value one, that's the one I would get. It has a... Um, it, this it's little trap door stays connected and you can lock it in place and you can see can you see how big the gear is on that guy <laughs> so it really you can really hear it as it works do you I'll, I'll be quiet you hear that so um i actually like that audible sound it makes me feel like yeah something's happening <laughs> so this is a this is a much stronger adhesive than the durice one this one is by Allery, and this, so is this one. Um, but I would, if you're, and these two, you almost always find them together. I would always suggest the red one over the blue one. And this one is a much stronger hold. It's harder for me to pull it apart. Now I just glued this together. Okay, can you see the difference? It took a lot of, it took a lot more strength for me to get it apart, and it took the paper from each side much stronger hold than the Sturice one was. So if you're looking for a value, this is your one you want. This, and yes, this would be fine on cards. Lynn says the Juris is good for short-term projects like garage sale signs or something. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. Good point, Lynn. Okay, another runner that is um, popular is this one by Scrapbook Adhesives. It's the Easy Runner. Um, and some of you might remember an adhesive from back in the day called started with an H. Herma, 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 Hermafix. <laughs> I 
I remembered. Which did the little, little lines. That's what this one does is the little lines of adhesive. So I'll bring this up so you can see. You see it does the little lines. And so it's easy. One of the advantages or things that people liked about the Herm Effects and this one is that it's easy to break. You know, when it stops, it stops on a straight line. It doesn't string like the other ones. But you've already learned how to avoid that, right? You make the check mark move. So on all these other ones, you just make a check mark and you get that straight cut. So a lot of people do like this one. This is available uh, in a two pack with no refills. Okay, and the last runner I'm gonna share with you today, and then we're gonna move on to other kinds of glue, is this one, the Sticky Thumb. This is my personal favorite one. Um, if I'm going, going to use a tape runner, it's, and I'm on my own, this is the one I am personally going to use. So it has a removable lid here. It has these grips right here, which if you ever lose them, I found out, because I was, I was watercoloring one day, my hand was really wet and it popped off. They have like a little Lego hand, so you can, Lego, um, what do you call them, spines. So you can just press it right back in, so that's awesome. And then it has the grips on the side, so that's handy. And of all of them, to me, this one feels the most ergonomically correct. To, it just feels right to hold. So many times people pick this one up and hold it upside down. I'm like, nothing's happening. That's because you got it upside down. <laughs> this one just feels right. Um, and I, this one also has that really big grind or um, gear, so you can really hear it as you use it. And it makes a great noise. It doesn't string, and it is very, very strong. You might remember this looking different in the past. It was made by another company, but it was still called Sticky Thumb. It was bright green and had a black thumbprint. Um, and that's how I first got to know about it. And it was very, very strong holding. In fact, um, the person that sold it to me, we, I was at an event where we were making different projects at, at different, kind of a round robin kind of project deal. And we came to this table and he was trying to sell the glue, but his pro a tape runner, his project was making a three dimensional like gift bag out of cardstock. So he's gonna fold this cardstock and have us carry around stuff in it. And he hands us a tape runner, a tape runner, to hold a three-dimensional bag together. I'm like, uh, honey, this ain't gonna work. <laughs> tape runners are not gonna work. He's like, no, 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 it'll work, trust me. And then he shows, and then he, then we do it, and I'll be darned if that thing did not hold all day. And I was putting all kinds of candy, and <laughs> paper car crafts, and all the projects I made into this bag, and the whole thing held together long term with a sticky thumb. I was very, very impressed. Um, we, when you buy the runner, it comes with an extra refill and then there's a three pack refill available on the refills. Right? Um, so it, it, you know, penny to penny, uh, uh, footage to footage, this one and this one are very comparable. I per personally prefer this one. Yeah, Lynn, you were there. You remember that. It held all the swag. That's right. Lynn was there. <laughs> so she, you remember. I remember we, we called him Sticky Tim after that. <laughs> he is, even though he no longer owns the company, he's still in my phone contacts as Sticky Tim. <laughs> okay, so those, that's runners. Bottom line on runners, regular tape runners. This one for if you're going to do card making and I need a tape runner, this is what I'm going to use. I would also use this in scrapbooks personally. If I need a value one, I'm gonna use this one. If I'm gonna do die cuts or thin or intricate things, I'm gonna use this one. So these are my top picks. And then this one I would just have um, for other things other than paper. Okay, I'm gonna move on to the next, which is going to be glue, liquid glues. Okay, so next we're gonna do liquid glues. Or should we do other tapes? Let's do other tapes. Let's finish up on the realm of tape, tape, tapes, tape, tapes. <laughs> okay. This one, little sticker photo squares, been around forever. And folks still really like this. The box has not changed. 
Um, it, it, it becomes a dispenser and it has these little tiny squares of adhesive, um, most commonly used for photos. Um, better do it on black so you can see. And you just kind of put one of each in each corner and then it has a pull tab. You pull this off and you're gonna throw that paper away. And then you have your white square of adhesive. People really like this for um, photographs and putting them into scrapbooks. Uh, I've, I used them back in the day. I have long since moved on to other things, but it's still a, uh, something that people ask for all the time and they, they really like. I don't like it. I find it, I find that it is harder to use. I have all this paper I got to deal with and I, in this case, I would rather either use a glue stick or, um, a tape runner or score tape, but as a personal opinion, the stickiness is, is great and it is acid free and it is totally photo safe. And if you're just doing photos or paper, you know, lightweight stuff, this is a good adhesive. Okay. It comes in a couple of different, you know, you can get a 500 count that is, that are mini or, or this size. Um, for tape, tape, this is my favorite. Hello, score tape. I love you comes in a number of different size widths, <laughs> but these are the two that I use the most often, a quarter inch and the three eighths inch. There's an, there's as skinny as an eighth inch and there's like one inch and, and, and all kinds of sizes in between. Mm -hmm. But these are the two that I use the most often. In fact, I use this one almost all the time. For me, when I'm card making on my own, I mean, I almost always use this one. Here's, so, so what score tape is, is a very strong sticky tape that you can tear off from its liner and you stick it onto your project and then you burnish it down. You just rub over the top of it and that is kind of like a vinyl and that is transferring the adhesive to your, what it is you're wanting to glue. And then you peel off the paper to reveal the sticky. This is very, very, very strong adhesive much stronger than the runners we were playing with. Much, much stronger. If you're doing anything like, it was like the punch boards and folding up like a card or a box, or you're doing anything dimensional, or just anything you want to hold really well, score tape is, is fantastic. It, you get so much and you really don't need a lot. If you're just doing paper to paper, you can just put a little in the corners. Um, if you really want something to hold really, really well, you can do like an X or whatever. It's very, very strong. You want to say something about it? Yeah. Okay. So with score tape, it's so strong that typically for projects, since I come more from a mixed media background, this is a wood canvas. Score tape is what I found works the best for when it comes to actual tape to actually stick it onto wood and have it stay on there until I'm really ready to take it off. But as you can see, it takes off the paper. Yeah. So it's, that's how it's stuck. It is. Yeah. yeah. There we go. Super strong holding. Thanks, Storm. Mm -hmm. That's my helper, Storm. <laughs> Say hi. Say hi, Storm. Hi. <laughs> okay. But so yeah, score tape I use all the time as um, my pretty much my go-to for card making. Because like I said, people are going to try to tear your cards apart. They, they're not going to have any luck with this. They're going to have to actually rip your card. <laughs> So they'll stop. It'll stop the damage. <laughs> hey, I don't like it when they do that. I spend so much time on that card. You guys feel my pain, right? <laughs> score tape for sure is what I would use. The, a couple other things about score tape. Great hold if you want a straight line, if you want it like a solid line of glitter. This is fantastic for that. Let's do some of that. Can you get me a little catch card, piece of paper right there? I'll fold it in half. Because it's going to be a full solid line of adhesive. Oh, and I'll show you a little trick. If you do not have fingernails, after you burnish it on, use you can use a needle, you can use a pokey tool. This is a tool from um, silhouette for removing vinyl but you can just we you can just wiggle that under there and get up that paper and peel that off so if you don't have nails to do it that's how you could do that 
But now I have a straight line of adhesive. And I can put some glitter on that bad boy. Okay, like that. And I'm just burnishing it in. And I'll tap off the extra. So now I have a nice solid line of adhesive and it's so sticky that the glitter really, really sticks to it. So if you want like clean precision, you can do that with glitter. Also, little known fact, a square tape is impossible. Yeah, so where how I just did this glitter, you pour on embossing powder and emboss it. The heat does not melt the tape, it doesn't roll up, it is impossible. Yes. It also means that if you have glued together a project, I'll let's say a card, and after you put your final element on there and you stamp one more time, you're like, I wish I would have embossed that guy. You could put powder on it, shake it off, heat it up, and your other layers that you've already glued, if you've glued it with this, will not come up. It'll stay sticky. Whereas if I had used, let's say, a tape runner, it's gonna melt at the adhesive and it'll pop off. Did you learn something just now? <laughs> yes, and the other cool, yes, Lynn, good point. If you are familiar with something called redline tape, this is your answer. This is the improvement over redline. It's just as sticky as redline. It does all the things that redline does. It comes in all the shape, sizes that redline does. But redline, you had to cut with scissors. This one, you can just tear with your hand. It, I'm gonna say this carefully. It's tearable tape, <laughs> which means really great, not terrible. <laughs> okay. Can you take over and do the glue dog for me? Okay, I'm gonna ask Stormy to come in and cover these three glue dots. That's, that's the strongest one there is. Okay. And removable like gift cards. Okay, Stormy's gonna cover glue dots. Okay, so we have a few different glue dots here. So we have the mini glue dots that's meant for small embellishments. I love using this if I have rhinestones or gemstones and they're not really sticking down for me. I will put down a couple of those and then put my little rhinestones on top and that will help it stay down. And what's nice about these packs is that instead of the old rolls, you now get 12 on here that is terrible apart little sheets so you can take as many as you need. And it has a paper backing, which you'll remove, and the glue dot will be stuck to a clear. So I'll set that on here real quick. And that is the mini, there's the camera. That's the mini one there. So it's really small little circle. And the mini ones are a permanent adhesive, so it does stick really well. And then we have the half inch size of removable glue dots. So what makes the removable one special is let's say you made a card that you want to put a gift card in there. This is going to work for that because it's the same glue that is on the back of your gift cards. So it makes it nice and easy to put on and remove. Let's say uh, some kiddos made little wall hanging pieces that they want to put in the window. This you can put in your window and take it right off and it's not going to damage anything. If I can get off the plastic here. There we go. So even though it's a strong adhesive, it's not so strong that you can't just roll and take it right up and kind of knead it like it's Play-Doh almost. <laughs> but yeah, same adhesive that you would find on a gift card. So that's what makes the removable glue dots work so well. And they're very thin too. They're not going to make a card really stand up or a piece stand up a whole bunch. It's going to lay flat. 
And then time for my favorite one. This is also a half inch size, but it's the permanent project one. This is the strongest glue dot there is. Which I typically will use this size if I'm doing a heavier weight. I like to use it when I am using watercolor paper and putting it onto a colored backdrop as kind of a reverse frame. So that's its size. That's a good thing. Yeah, the glue dot rolls are very sticky and yes, they get stuck everywhere. That's why I prefer the sheets now, just because you get 12 in there. It has a protective cover that you don't really have to fight with, but you don't have to worry about having the roll fall off and roll all into the carpet or all over your pets. All right, so that's the glue dots, and we're gonna move on to glue sticks next. Thank you, Stormy. Lynn says she's making Christmas cards one year, and her cat <laughs> jumped on the table, and the roller glue dots got stuck in her fur. Oh no, oh no. <laughs> that sounds like a problem. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so of the adhesives we just showed you, I definitely feel like um, glue dots have their place and they're certainly convenient. Of all of them, I probably use the mini the most often, but the craft is the strongest. And then, but score tape of every adhesive we looked at so far, this is my precious. In fact, I'm gonna wear it for a while. Okay, <laughs> so now we're gonna talk about glue sticks. There's all kinds of glue sticks out there in the world, but only one is king. Who can guess which of these is king? It's probably one that you don't find very anywhere but the craft warehouse just probably is my guess. It's hard to find, but this is the best. Am I right? Oh yeah, embellishment glue stick, hands down, is the only glue stick I'll ever use from now on. Yeah. Definitely, this is the winner. If I was if I was to be trapped on a desert island where the only thing I could do is paper crafts, but I could only have one adhesive, this would be it. Yes. The embelly. That's right, Lynn. The embelly. <laughs> this is amazing. It is much stronger than any other glue stick. There's no fillers in there. There's no wax. It's all paste. It's very, very strong very strong holding but like all glue sticks um it's you already know how to do this you were trained in kindergarten how to use a glue stick so there's no learning curve and no eating it <laughs> oh yeah you're also trained not to eat it <laughs> definitely don't eat this eh? it's gonna be very sticky talk about a sticky situation so it you can advance it just like you would a chapstick or any other glue stick do not put this on your lips bad idea a little bit goes a long way for paper to paper. It's safe for photos, but this glue, unlike other glues, can also permanently bond things like fabric and wood and plastic, um, fe light felt, light materials, papers, um, photos, I said, and also a lot of different kinds of embellishments. The first time someone tried to sell me this glue stick, before I'd ever seen it, I was like, you know, I got glue sticks covered. I don't need another glue stick. Glue sticks are not the greatest thing. I really don't need another glue stick in the world. And he's what he had done is he had stuck a penny, a coin penny, onto his business card with the glue stick. And he asked, he handed it to me and he said, take that penny off. Could not do it. And I'm not, I am a wimp. I can handle myself. <laughs> I could not remove that. So yes, it can hold metal. It, thank you for your question. Yes, it can hold metal. Um, we've used it 
We use it all the time in the store for displays that we make because people touch and feel on them and try to prime apart. This is one of the three glues we use the most often mm -hmm. in our crafting side of the store. It is very, very strong holding. Once you, once it sets up and you, you have time, like a regular glue stick to stick it down. Oh, I didn't get it right. Pick it up and put it back down the way you wanted it. But once it sets up, it is a forever hold. You have to ruin your project to get your stuff back off. I once glued a wood six inch letter cut out to a painted canvas. That was like 10 years ago, right Swan? And you can pick up that canvas by the letter that is glued with this on top of paint and gesso. No problem, it is stuck tight. So if you can only have one glue, this is the glue you want. And anything these can do, this can do better, honestly. These are all okay glues, particularly for papers or photos. These are all just fine and they, they do the job. This one is extra strength and it does a pretty darn good job. Um, and um, But of everything, honestly, this one is king. Now look how big these guys are. And you get an about similar price or the same price. This is a lot smaller. You don't need near as much of this as you do of that. You do not need to go crazy. Just a little bit of this goes a long way. If I can only have one glue, once again, this is the king. So we, we do sell this in stores and it's online in a trio pack bundle right now on our online store. This is a, if you do not have this glue, you need this glue. I'm telling you, right? Okay. These glues are just fine. And, and if you, if you grew up using like Elmer's and this, this feels like this is what you want to do, it feels comfortable to you. That's fine. Particularly if you're doing paper, this one is just fine. And then this one is particularly great for photos. That's what it's made for. And it, and it does burn, burn, um, bond, sorry, it does bond permanently. Um, the photos and or paper to paper. And this one works pretty well on paper and on fabric. It comes out purple, but it dries clear. I would say that's sort of one advantage that this one has over the others is because you can really see it more than you can because these others are, are white or clear. Lynn, good point. Um, when you get down to the very, very end of this, you can use like a toothpick to dig that out. It is gold in there. Don't waste it. Don't throw it away. Dig out that last little bit. Or even if you're gluing something that's small, like I said, if I was stuck on an, on an island and I had a scrapbook all the time, but I had no way to, no other glue, I could use a toothpick or this is a, uh, what do you call this thing? It's a skewer. A skewer. <laughs> and you could just pick a little bit up on your toothpick and then you could stick that on like sequins or little little baby things or like Lynn says at the very end of the bottle. I'm gonna put it back in there so I don't waste it. Precious. If I could wear this one like I can these I would. That's how much I love it. Okay that's glue sticks. Next, next we're going to do glue pens and uh, liquid glues. Okay. Let's talk about glue pens first. This one is very, very popular. It is by Secura. Um, from Japan. They also make the really cool jelly roll pins. So this is very much like using a pin. So it's a pin, it's a pin point, uh, there you go, pin point roller, clicky glue. This is particularly just intended for paper. You want to keep the lid on when you're not using it. Keep it out of direct sunlight. When you buy a new one, it has this little ball of, of glue on the end. You need to remove that. That's just for in the shipping process. And then when you use it, it comes out blue. Can you see that? But it's very much like writing with a pen. I would only, and it dry, as soon as it starts to go clear, it's starting to dry. So see, it dries, it goes clear very quickly. Do you see that? It's just disappearing before your eyes. <laughs> um, you want to use this for very, very small, detailed things. And um, 
it's very it's very quick drying for sure so it, it's take the word quickie as a as a clue but it is good for little tiny things so if I was gluing like uh, oops sorry if I was gluing um like a die, if I had a die cut little fox and I would need to put his little whiskers on his little eyes on this will be a good option is it my personal favorite no it is not this is my these zig glues are my favorite for glue pens let me open these and show you why you open that one for me Okay, the, these actually come in a few different sizes, but these are the two that I like the best. So this is the, this is a two-way glue. Both of these are two-way glues. And what that means is you can use them either as a permanent adhesive or as a temporary. They come out blue and when used while they're blue, they will be a permanent adhesive. If you use them and you see that blue and you let it go till it's clear, then it's tacky and it'll be like a post-it note temporary adhesive okay this this one is the chisel tip now this one's brand new and I, w I wanted to use a brand new one so you could see how to get it started there's no glue in this tip right now it's totally dry the glue is in the barrel when you first get it you need to press this up and down a few times on a piece of paper and tell the just like you would certain pens that need to be primed so this tip needs to be primed so I'm going to press it up and down, up and down, until the glue comes down. And I'm going to show you when it's about halfway. See the blue? The glue is starting to fill up the nib at the bottom. So do that until you're getting blue to come out. There we go. Here's why I like it. If I use it this direction, I get a thick line. If I turn it and use it on the chisel tip, I can get a thinner line. While it's blue, it is permanent. Go ahead and glue whatever you're gonna glue at this point. And then if you let it go clear, then it is more of a temporary hold. That is what where it comes in the two way. But this one is the one I really like. This is the squeeze and roll runner. So it has a ballpoint pen and just like this one did, see? But it also has this little chamber right here that you can squeeze, hence the name squeeze and roll. So you can either, with, I'm gonna hold up here so I'm not squeezing. You can either push down to get some out or you can squeeze and push and get more out. I'll bring that closer so you can see. This is just pushing down without squeezing. This is with squeezing. Pushing down and squeezing, pushing down, not squeezing. So you can write, doodle, draw, whatever. It's great for little teeny things. It's also really fun for um, glitter so you can write your name in glue where's that scrap paper at wow. or another one oh look at that my name in lights that's what I always wanted Ooh. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? So you can really get a fine line with that if you wanted to. Also, did you know you could emboss it? Yeah, everything I just did with the glitter, do with embossing powder and then heat, heat set it and you can emboss your own name. Now tell me who's gonna sign their Christmas cards like that this year, right? Right? It's also great for those little tiny, tiny, you know, you want to glue something very small, you can do that. You want to um, doodle with it and put glitter or put embossing powder on it, you can do that. But it's great for holding little things. If you like a liquid glue but you need control, this is the one that you want um, because you, you it really does feel very much like using a marker but you can have it more or less simply by squeezing or not squeezing. Um, so if you're gluing little tiny, if you have like little tiny punch outs, little tiny die cuts, that kind of thing, it's really great for paper, for glitter, for lightweight stuff. This is not gonna hold um, chipboard, it's not gonna hold um, metal and, and, and heavier embellishments, but it is a great tip, yeah. Okay, 
So those are glue pens. There's lot. There's other ones. They're not as good. <laughs> this is the best one in my opinion. Okay. So if I can only have one glue pen, it's going to be the squeeze and roll. Then there's all kinds of liquid glues. We'll talk about a couple different ones. Um, we'll, we'll do these two first. Yeah. Cool. Mm -hmm. so these two are from Tombow. Both excellent adhesives. Um, but commonly asked, like, what's the difference? Why, why are there two available? Well, there's some similarities and there's some differences. They're obviously both by Tombow. This one, the Aqua, you, you get more in the bottle. They both have the same kind of dual tips. So they have the fine tip end for um, precision and they both have a broad tip end. This one, the Mono Multi, this one is my own. This is probably pretty well used up. <laughs> Yeah. But the broad tip one, you can squeeze some out and then stop squeezing and then use this rubber tip to smooth it out and get a really fine application, sorry, application of adhesive, right? Or you can use the fine end to get lines or to put it where you want it. Okay, um, in all liquid adhesives, if you're a first time user and you want to glue this paper to this paper, here's what a first time user would do. Squeeze really hard and put it right next to the line. What's going to happen? Oh, it's going to go everywhere. It's going to go everywhere. If I, if I try to put this on here, perfectly lined up those two, those two edges, this glue is going to, cause look how thick it is. It's gonna just it's gonna flatten itself out and it's gonna squeeze over the edge and I'm gonna get glue everywhere. So when using a liquid adhesive, squeeze lightly and go in about a quarter inch or so and do a thin line like that. Let me show you the difference. Yes, no. <laughs> so if you accidentally get too much, don't waste it. You can pick some up with your uh, with another piece of paper and use it like that. Okay, so that's how I'm salvaging this and then I can glue this together. The great thing about liquid adhesive is that you can move it around and get it where you want it. Why do I like this particular liquid adhesive? Because it is very strong holding. It's, this is my personal go-to for chipboard, but although that embellishment glue stick also works great on chipboard. But this one is fantastic. This was the very first glue I ever used in card making. And my very first attempt, yep, I was that person that put it on way too thick and I got glue everywhere. It, you just take some, it just takes a little bit of a learning curve. What's great about this is it comes out white, but it dries kind of opaque-ish clear. So you're really not going to see it if you get too much, but it, you can, you can overload something. So a little bit goes a long way. I really, really, really love this adhesive. I really do. Holds so many different things. For some, some people cannot handle a liquid. It's just too messy for them. It, it, and that, that just means you're heavy handed. Here's, here's a good analogy. It's not always true, but if you have a very sharp, if you're a person who has a very, very sharp pencil, a regular lead pencil, and it's ultra sharp, and you, and you write with it, and you break the tip every time, you're just heavy handed. Nothing wrong with that. It's just this probably, it, if that's the case for you, you need a duller tip, you, liquid glue might not be for you. That's not always true, but it's a good kind of analogy. I think it helps people kind of understand. It, less is more. Okay, so let's talk about the aqua glue. The aqua glue is um, comes out clear and dries totally clear. And the biggest difference between this, the aqua and the multi, is that the aqua is also a sealer. So kind of like a Mod Podge, it's also a sealer. I didn't realize that was a sealer. Yeah. I will now use that on my washi tape. <laughs> I'll show you another option for washi. Mm -hmm. Hold up. Okay. So this one also has the thin, fine tip or pin tip, and it also has a broad tip. But this one, you might notice, I don't know, see if I can hold it the right way. It has almost these little ridges in here. And those are, it's like a brush. So if, when you use it in the broad end, it's more like a paintbrush when you brush with it. And then the, thin end is like the other one so it's just a little liquid oh I got a little tip on there there we go okay so um, when I say it's a sealer it means that much like a like Mod Podge 
is a glue and a sealer. So is this. Uh, people that, the, the typical type of crafter that really adores the aqua is someone who does mixed media or who does um, art journals, um, who's doing like a lot of collage work, that kind of thing. Because unlike the Mod Podge where you're going to have to use like some kind of applicator, like a brush or a foam brush, this guy, it's built in, it's less messy, and you only need a little bit. Um, this is great for uh, adhering small things, but really it shines when used as in the form of a decoupage. So paper to paper, photo to paper. Um, and then you can also put it over the top of things. Here is a recent discovery. When, if you guys are familiar with diamond dot painting, those are those really cool um, graphs that you put the little faceted diamonds on, diamonds on it to create a photo or a picture. Um, sometimes people want to seal those and you can seal them with Mod Podge or a spray sealer, but this is a great alternative. So you can seal that. The reason why we like this one for that is because it does not take away any of the shine or sparkle from the diamond dots at all. We think we have a diamond dot in the house. We're going to look. <laughs> Okay, so she has one that she's working on. I'm gonna find it. Here we go. So this is a diamond dot painting. This is the graph. And see the, here are the floral she's already done and the eyes she's done. How they work is it's a sticky backing. So you, re you move this and this is sticky and this is your chart. And so you pick up a diamond that is that color and put it in that spot, kind of like um, paint by number. Paint by number. So once you get it all completely done and you have all of the little, get a close up of this, and you have all of the little dots filled in with the, with the gems, you take this plastic off. Then if you want to, you don't have to, but if you, if you wanted to, you could seal. And this one would seal it. And you just rub it right over the top after it's totally done. Looks like you got a few hours ahead of you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So those are those two liquid adhesives. Um, I do want to talk about the joy of a fine line adhesive. This was that glue pen, but sometimes you want it even finer. And that's where this comes in. I really love this little applicator. So it's a precision tip applicator. Here it is um, open and it has this little um, lid and this little, <laughs> Nubbin. Nubbin? <laughs> this little nubbin. <laughs> that can hold the tip out of out of your way when you're using it. And then we have this um, needle tip right here. I'm going to use this on this black just so you can see. So you can get really fine lines if you want. What, I, what you fill this with is whatever kind of liquid adhesive you like. What I fill mine with is this guy. If you like, Renee, I noticed you said that you, this is a hard, hard one for you to use. If you, this, putting it in this tool might make it easier for you to not put out too much. Here I'm squeezing like a medium pressure and now I'll just do a, a light. You see that? So you have a lot more control, kind of like you have control with the squeezy um, zig. But this one you can get real, real fine. Let's do the glitter again. I need a new paper. Okay. Let's do half and half. Is that not pretty? I did that just for you, Lynn. You like? <laughs> so.
So for me, when I I use this um, little glue applicator most often um, on the intricate die cuts myself, um, where I'm just doing like a, a you know a small it's a small little bit of die cut that I need some adhesive on or a, a little or even sometimes the littlest edge that didn't um, hit here down because this one you really have full control with. But you can put whatever your favorite adhesive is. If this, keep this uh, lid on when you're not using it. If it does get clogged, you can take the whole thing off and wash it and just rinse it under hot water till it runs clear. Till you get out any, um, um, what do you call, um, dried gunk. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. Next. Even though, you love it even though, even though glitter is evil. I know what you're getting at, but it's, you can just admire it from through the camera. <laughs> okay, let's talk about some other liquid adhesives, though. There is this guy. La -da -da. This is Glossy Accents. Um, you might like, wait, that's not an adhesive. Ah, but it is. <laughs> uh, most often, this is used to create a clear dimensional dome over top of something else. So this is great for altering... Um, like stickers and that kind of thing. Like let's say you had a red heart flat sticker. You could dress that sticker up by squeezing some of this. It has a very fine tip. Squeeze some of it on to the heart and you can just manipulate it around and then let it dry and you will have this dome raised puffy looking heart. You could add glitter into it if you wanted to which is really fun. Um, it makes great for like faux dew drops like on silk flowers. Mm -hmm. um, you can put it over photos. We use this often in the store when we're making those photo magnets. This is what we use to put the photo and the to the bottom of the glass marble. Um, but this is all, but just like that, this is great for adhesive. So um, it's really a very strong hold. Um, it's good on clear things. It's good on like dominoes and that kind of stuff. The one really really important thing you need to know about this bottle is when you get it in your hand, the first thing you want to do is shake it. Don't do that. Never, never shake this bottle because you will fill it full of bu air bubbles. And then every time you use it as where you want to see the glossy prettiness, it's going to be full of bubbles. And you're going to have to sit there and painstakingly pop each one with a needle or a heat tool. It's a pain. Don't do it. Just don't shake it. But Glossy Accents is a fantastic, item, fantastic, unique adhesive double duty um, enha embellishment enhancer. So this is this is a great adhesive. The next one I want to talk about is three in one. My personal favorite glue ever. Stormy's personal favorite glue ever. <laughs> and at the store, we in, our insider joke is that we call this the the cold version of hot glue because um, it can it can hold so many different things. It's a very thick and tacky. And it dries pretty quickly. It's, it, it's a almost instant grab, depending on what you're what you're gluing. But you're doing anything dimensional. Um, this is great adhesive. It does have acetone in it, so it does have a bit of a smell. So that is something to consider. If you have recently painted your nails and you get some of this on your nail polish, is yeah, your nail. Say goodbye to your nail polish. Your manicure is done. Um, but it is acid free and it is waterproof. So it is safe to do in photos and it's safe to do for stuff outside, that kind of thing. What do you like to use it for, Storm? So the past couple of years at the store, I've been doing a project with birdhouses that everyone loves my castle birdhouse where I'm gluing rocks to this wooden birdhouse. That is the only glue I find that can hold it there, hold it still while it has time to fully cure and I can stand it up by the end of the day nice. and not have the rocks fall all down. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. And it is, we call it the cold version of hot glue because of how strong it is, but we like it better than um, a hot glue in a lot of cases because hot glue can is easy to like pry off once it's dried. Mm -hmm. Depends on the material, but overall this one's great. And I personally really like this one for felt. It's really good hold for felt. Felt can be hard to glue because of all those little fibers. They want to like stick to the adhesive and not to whatever it is you're trying to glue. But three in one is one of the three glues we use most often in the crafty part of the store. This one, the Pioneer Embellishment glue stick, and and also E six thousand. 
which I don't know, we're looking for that one. <laughs> but these are two, these, here's two anyway of the glues we use most often for the um, uh, stronghold use that we, that we need in the models that we make for people to look at. Okay, so three in one's an awesome glue. Oh, and here is the E6000, you see how much I love it. <laughs> so of these three, these are these are three glues that we use the most often. E6000 is a clear, transparent, su flexible super glue. It is paintable. It does smell. It is very strong holding. It's industrial strength. Um, but it's if you need a super glue, this is a good, strong adhesive. When it's a brand new bottle, whatever you do, do not squeeze the bottle. Yes. <laughs> good tip. <laughs> because? The reason why is because as soon as you take off the cap, it is so pressurized in there that it just wants to spew out immediately. Yeah. So make sure, just like with hot glue, that you have a little catch piece of paper or something you don't care about underneath of it. <laughs> Good tip, Storm. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so yeah, for general crafting purposes, these three are what we use the most often in the store. Hot glue more so like in, with floral decor and that kind of thing. But these are the three that we use most often. Okay, back to liquid glues though real quick. Um, some of you may be familiar with this one. This guy has been around for what, 50 years? I'm not even exaggerating, I don't think. Um, but Aline's Tacky, this is the original. There are all kinds of new versions of Aline's. But the original Tacky, this is a good all-purpose general craft glue. Um, it's it's thick, it's tacky, um, it's it dry, it's very strong holding, it dries totally clear, it's non-toxic, so if you're wanting sort of an affordable adhesive that um, you can kind of use in general crafting, I'm talking about more like lightweight type stuff, um, and you maybe want your kids to be able to use it too, this might be, this would probably be a good option for you. Um, do I personally use it? No. No, but that's because I, you know, I'm not, I don't need it for those kind of things. I, I have all, so many other awesome glues that I like, but if I had kids, young kids, um, who wanted to craft with me, I would definitely let them use this one, <laughs> right? Cause then their, their project's going to work. Cause I mean, of course we, most of the time you're going to like, okay, use your Elmer's, but if we're doing an actual craft, you know, you want your kids to be proud of their stuff too. And, or if I was just crafting with them and I wanted it to, I knew that I wanted whatever it was to stay stuck. <laughs> like this is what I was, this is what I would use. You know, what do I yeah. do? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I've moved on in my crafting glue world, but if I'm making a kid with the little cousins or yeah. something, I'm definitely going to reach for that one because I know it's safe for them. Yeah. And that's the hugest factor Yeah, is because I don't want to have to explain why their hand is now stuck in their hair because <laughs> I know that's going to happen. <laughs> yeah. So, but, but this, but the Lean's does have a huge fan base and there are a lot of people who absolutely love the, um, the tacky glue, not exaggerated 50 years. Yeah. So there's, you know, your grandma probably loves this stuff and, and your mom and, and your aunt and, and, um, it's, it, there's nothing wrong with it. And if you grew up using this and you know, it does work is it there's, it's a great glue. It's great, affordable glue for sure. Okay. The next one I want to talk about is the fabric tech. This one specifically is fantastic for fabric and it bonds things like lace, um, and leather, um, to things like more, so you can glue fabric and lace and leather to itself or also to glass, to wood, to anything like that. So if you're like trying to put a ruffle, you know, on something that's wood, this is a good glue to use. Um, it's acid free and it is washable. And that's one of the great things about this one for when you're gluing fabric to fabric, um, because you can wash it. Um, and it's, and it is uh, flexible. So it doesn't, you know, you, you imagine putting glue on fabric and being able to manipulate it. Most of the time it just becomes very stiff. This one is still lets you have that fabric, uh, flow, <laughs> right? Um, and as for myself, that's pretty much what I use it for is if, if I'm doing something fabric, this is what I'm going to reach for most of the time. If it's not something I need to wash, I'm probably going to use this guy, but they're made by the same company. If you notice that. And speaking of made by the same company, da -da -da, one more, the Beacon Zip Dry. 
Zip Dry is very has a very much the same properties as the three in one, only it is much thinner. It dries very very fast. What I love about Zip Dry is it will not wrinkle papers, even thin papers. So if you're doing um, any kind of like altered arts or um, uh, art journaling, that kind of thing, this is a really great adhesive. It does have that um, same kind of acetone in it, so it is a little bit smelly. Um, about 10 years ago, maybe 12, I don't know, it was a very short-lived trend of clear scrapbooking where the pages and the elements were all clear. <laughs> and so that, that created, I have a book in here somewhere. Um, anyway, that created um, a challenge. What kind of glue can we use on two things that are plastic and clear where you're gonna see through it? This was the answer. It held tight and you could not see the adhesive. This is not for vellum, no, no. This is for like, uh, what I'm referring to is like in use of like for plastic. Oh, she found one. Here's a book I made <laughs> ages ago. Many years ago. This is the clear plastic that I'm talking about. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. So all of these elements are glued down with um, that zip dry. So and it is, let's see, I made this like maybe 10 or 12 years ago. Let's see. I'm trying to pull it off. Yeah, it's not coming up. Pretty good, huh? This is not, these are all my favorite rock bands from back in the day. <laughs> That's fun. Blast from the past. But you see, it's um, a really good adhesive. And that all the glue I use on every bit of this is this guy, this guy right here. And you can't see any glue, can you? Nope. No glue to be seen. That's really cool. See, it's under this element right here on this. So I painted this red and this is a totally clear element and there's glue. This is zip dry under there. Cool. Thanks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. Those are my hair bands. I love the hair bands. Okay. Um, one more liquid glue. This has nothing to do with paper crafting, but sometimes it comes up. What do you use for wood? And a very common one that people like shout out immediately is Gorilla Glue. And Gorilla Glue is fantastic. It's great. It's a very strong hold and all of that. But the problem or the issue, if you if this is your first time using a wood glue, Gorilla Glue expands. And so you put it in your, you know, you put it on your seam of your wood and you're gluing your two woods together, it's going to expand. And, and if you're not ready for that or expecting that, it can crack your it, wood. It can crack the wood. And so this is, um, a good option especially for a beginner it's pr virtually the same price this is waterproof it's stainable um, it bonds stronger than wood it resists heat mold and mildew um, you can sand it you can paint it and it's easy to clean up with water if you're looking for a wood glue you're gonna glue wood to wood this is what I would recommend okay still on liquid let's talk about Mod Podge you cannot you cannot not have Mod Podge available in all different um, formulas and sizes. This is one of the smaller bottles, but we have outdoor, we have dishwasher safe, we have Mod Podge with sparkle in it. Um, um, we have ones now that are just for um, puzzles. Yeah. Um, there's an image transfer one that yeah. exists. Yeah. There's all kinds of awesome ones. Uh, these are the two most common and um, the color, these are the same thing. The color just tells us the finish. So, um, one of the, the yellow one here is a matte finish. So dull, no shine at all. And then the orange one here is a glossy finish. So it's shiny. You use this for, um, this is both adhesive and a sealer. You can apply, you can use it with a, um, what's that? Your mom tried to use glue, a stone back into an earring with Gorilla Glue disaster. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> I have a glue for that. I'll show you in a minute. <laughs> but the Mod Podge is great, but you do need to apply it with something like a foam brush or um, a paintbrush that you're going to wash out. Um, it is both a glue and a sealer, so you can put it on what you're gluing, and then you can put it over the top, too, to seal it, or just use it one way or the other. Um, we most often use it for decoupage things. A little known fact, you can take Mod Podge and put it on a palette, and put some acrylic paint to mix the two together and then you've made your paint 
also its own sealer. What? Did you know that? I did not know that. That <laughs> yes. is good to know. I love it when I teach her something. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, you could put some of this and mix in your acrylic paint and now your paint is also its own sealer. That's really awesome for use in if you're sponging or painting on or in a um, art journal. Right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, you can use Mod Podge to seal puzzles. There is one that's specifically made for puzzles, but they all have directions, I believe, on the back. Yep. Puzzle saver. So once you've made your puzzle, you can use this to save your puzzle, keep it permanently put together. So then another good thing about Mod Podge too is sometimes we'll have a wood surface that's really textured mm. or something. So our vinyl doesn't stick to it very well. Mm -hmm. What you could do is one of two options, either really rub it down and get it stuck on there and then go over with Mod Podge, uh -huh. or you can do three coats of Mod Podge onto that wood board uh -huh. or that textured surface and then put your vinyl on and it'll make it stick every single time. Awesome. That's an awesome tip. Yeah. So it kind of creates um, um, a barrier between the wood and your vinyl. Mm -hmm. and gives a smooth surface for your vinyl to then stick to without changing the look of your wood. It still looks like wood. Yeah, Unless just you... make sure the wood is clean before you do it. Yeah, yeah. So Renee's asking about Ranger collage mediums or multi-mediums. Here is the multi-matte medium. Um, this comes in bigger bottles too, but I, I just have this little guy. This is virtually the same thing as this. You can use them the same ways. But this little applicator, so you, what I'm about to show you with this, you can do with this. But this little applicator is awesome for fine, um, for fine details. Um, and you can use it like a collage. But th the thing that Stormy was mentioning earlier was sealing washi tape. Some people don't like washi purely because it doesn't stick. It doesn't stay stuck. The, the issue... And people say, why don't they make washi and it is more sticky? Well, washi is a printed paper, right, with sticky on one side. If they made it stickier, and they have tried, believe me, then all everything that this is stuck to, and if you have any old washi and you try to use it, you'll see what I mean, and you pull this up, this design has transferred to this sticky because they used too strong of a sticky. It has to be a light tack in order for the design to maintain its you know, intended look. But in use, um, a light tack isn't always what you want. If you're using it as something that you, you permanently want to, you want that to stay there as a design element, then you can put a sealer on it. I like to use the matte multimedium in this application just because it is easier to control. So I just put out a little dot, bring this closer so you can see. And this is the matte medium, so it will not shine or show. And I'm just gonna use my finger to rub over top of the washi the length of the washi and including the edges. When this dries, you will not be able to see it and my washi is completely sealed and will not come up. That's why you must have this. This is awesome. You can do that exact same thing with this. Okay, but the advantage of this one is this is also a much stronger adhesive than this is. So this can hold embellishments and chipboard and um, heavier weight things than what this can. This is really for paper. This you can use on all different kinds of surfaces and have a have a very strong hold. A lot like you can this one, but it's just that this is matte and you can use it for so many things. I But I probably, nine times out of ten, I use this as a washi sealer. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mod Podge, can we talk about all these adhesives? Okay, and we have a couple of specialty adhesives I want to show you. This one is Bead Fix from Beadalon. This is very, very, very strong. Do not get this on your skin. It's a super fast, st super strong adhesive, but it's specifically designed for repairing jewelry. So this is the one you should have had, Lynn, for your mom, or your mom should have had. But this is very, very strong holding for those kind of repair jobs. Do not get it on your skin. But if you, you know, this, it, when you need it, you need it. So it's, it's handy to have in your toolbox. Um, foam is a hard, like that fun foam. A lot of glue is either going to eat it, you know, just 
destroy it completely or just not hold it all. So you need a glue that will hold the foam. Hence, hold the foam. <laughs> These are from our friends from Beacon. <laughs> and so obviously they have a sense of humor. But this is great for styrofoam or the fun foam stuff. It's an instant grab. Um, it's water cleanup and it's non-toxic. So this is, a, this is a good adhesive when you need that foam to hold. It's really good too um, have, for different foam projects, especially if you're getting those partially pre-made foam science kits. Like the kids have to build the planets or mm. build a pyramid or whatever. Mm -hmm. That's going to work. And you can still, once it's fully dry, you can still go over and paint and still have it stick and not fall apart on you. Mm -hmm. Good. Okay, and then this is another specialty adhesive. You most of the time don't need this kind of adhesive, but when you have something that is plastic and you're bonding plastic to plastic, let's say you're trying to repair a camera lens, the, the plastic part, this is the glue you want. It's a very, very fine control. It's very strong. It's for detail work. This is the only one that's gonna work really, really well for that plastic to plastic. It works for other um, it, um, uses too, but it's partic particularly for plastic. I use that one for RC cars or mm -hmm. model cars mm -hmm. or even the metal earth models. I would do yeah. that just because the taps are so small, it's going to stick. Oh, good point. The metal earth um, kits are like a, are a metal, it's a version of like a, a, a model car, but it's a, it's made with metal, flat metal pieces that you uh, put together to create a three-dimensional metal project um, and sometimes you want a little extra adhesive so that's what that one's for if you're looking for an all-around good sticky super glue the crazy glue in the craft version this is a no run gel so it's not as runny as the original it does have a precision tip um, and so this one is a little bit um, what do I say safer <laughs> to use a little bit safer in that it, it, it you have a little if you accidentally get some on your skin you have a little bit of time to take care of that um but this bond's um ceramic plastic wood glass porcelain metal leather rubber vinyl all of those things so this is just like a good thing you want to have in your um in your junk drawer at home to you know sometimes you just gotta fix something <laughs> Legos. Legos. <laughs> hey. <laughs> I, hey, I have to make fun and crazy glue. It's craggle. It's craggle. Okay. Yes, it's craggle. She's right. <laughs> okay. We did not talk about foam adhesive. Comes in all different kinds of options. You can get sheets of it. You can get um, rolls of it. Or you can get dots of it. This is the most commonly used for... Um, Ellen says the craggle. Yes. <laughs> this is most commonly used by card makers for adding a little bit of dimension to your projects. So each one of these has its own little bit of adhesive that you can put somewhere and then peel off the paper layer. And then you have, when you glue your next element on, it will be raised up slightly. Like that. You can stack them on top of each other if you wanted to make it even taller. The, t the rolls are nice because you can tear them and stack them or um, do you have a pair of scissors? Oh there's one right there. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Or check this out. Cut this in lots of little slits but not all the way through. Maybe I shouldn't have done such a huge piece but you get the idea. So I'm cutting part way through this guy. If you like to make shaker cards, you might want to pay attention to this guy. Okay. By cutting those little slits in there, you can bend this to your whim. See that? And then when I pull the tape off, see it's all solid line here. So if and then go all the way around, and so that will 
trap my glitter or my sequins or whatever it is that I want in my shaker card. Yep. And then these guys, Renee, you're right. You can get the dots in either in squares or dots and in white or black. The sheets are designed so that you can die cut them. So you can kind of see on this package here, you can die cut the whole entire, so if you can have a foam adhesive on the entirety of the back of your um, die cut if you wanted to, or you can just use the sheets as whole and cut them to the size that you want. And one of the first questions we had on here was getting glue on delicate die cuts, right? But I'm gonna need some room here. I gotta get the... I, I, this is how I make room. <laughs> okay, that's good. I just gotta bring in this bad boy. Okay. Sometimes we have delicate die cuts, like these from Tim. Right? And from Tim Holtz. I wanna talk about this glue right here. This is Stick It. This is sheets of air thin adhesive. So what's inside of this pack are five sheets like this, and they have what's called crack back. So there is a line right here where you can pull it apart. And your adhesive is between this piece of paper and this piece of paper. So right in there, between these two pieces of paper is the glue. This is for paper, okay? Not for heavy duty stuff, This, but it will work on cardstock. So sometimes if I were to die cut this out, let me, let me actually do that. I'll die cut one. At this delicate little die cut, right? Ordinarily, with regular glue, you have to figure out how to get glue on the back of this. So the things I would recommend if you want a tape runner would be the pink one, because the dots will just only fall where there is adhesive for it to land on. Can you, if I put it right here, I think you can see. So I'll do the bottom half like that. I'm gonna put dots on this. But you do have to be careful, because you don't want to rip it, so I'm gonna kind of go in the direction of the cut. So, there is adhesive dots right there. Can you see right there? Can you see them? So the adhesive is, I don't have it all stringing all over the place, although I do have a dog fur. Get rid of that. <laughs> okay, and the extra adhesive is on, on my mat that I can just rub off. Or I could use this guy. So this is the Mono Multi in the Precision Tip Applicator. And on this one, I can I'll start, always start in the bigger area so you get a feel for it and then I'm not squeezing and I can just push this around or I can do little dots like that, right? And then adhere it down. Those are the first two options or the third one, especially if when you want edge to edge coverage of adhesive is gonna be that stick it glue. Where can I stick this? I need somewhere to stick this, there we go. Oh, isn't that pretty? Okay. <laughs> Don't forget to put your lid on the nubbin. <laughs> okay, to use the stick it. Where's your stick it? Thank you. You wanna put the sticky onto the back of what you're gonna die cut before you die cut it. This goes on before you die cut. So what I'm gonna do is kind of, and scissors. I'm gonna cut this down to the width of my paper. And then I've already die cut that far down, so I'll just do this side. I'll just do like this. Okay. So now what I'm gonna do is take this adhesive, crack the back side of it. I'm gonna take off one part of it only. Okay, this, oh, let go. This is the sticky side. And this is still, so this side still has a paper liner and this side still has a paper liner. I'm gonna find the back side of my paper that I want to be sticky, and I'm gonna lay that down on top of it up to that line and press, right? 
Then this is the rest of that paper that needs to come off. I'm just gonna scooch until it comes and then I'm gonna pull it towards me. That will help me get the least amount of bubbles or ripples, right? Okay, so what I have just done now is made this cardstock sticky back, okay? So at this point, it's ready to be die cut. So I'm gonna put it on my die cut platform. I'm gonna choose a die cut and stick it on there. And then die cut it like normal. It's air thin, you do not need to change your, your formulation of how many plates or anything or any shims or anything like that. Whatever you would normally do for that particular die is this will, you'll do the same thing. And this will pop right out like the other one did. So I've die cut it just like I did that other one, but this one has that white paper on the back. And this is ready to stick when I'm ready to stick. So you just have to peel, you just need to get it started, which is the hardest part usually. Just close so you guys can see. So just pull that and then most of the time the whole thing comes off, except for when you're on camera. <laughs> but you just peel this off kind of like a sticker. And then the whole entire back is sticky and you have edge to edge coverage um, for full adhesion. So you don't have parts that are sticky and parts that are not like you would with the um, liquid glue. There we go. See the whole thing just came off like that. I'm going to stick this too. Okay. It's very sticky. Try not to touch it too much. Okay. Sorry, my folding's not even. That's okay. And now every little bit is stuck down. That is awesome. Look at that. And it is stuck tight. I'm warping the paper. See how it's stuck? That is good adhesive, right? Mm -hmm. So when you have intricate, now it's not, it's not inexpensive, so I would not waste that, the stick it on bold, you know, a heart shape or a circle or something like that because you could easily cover that with adhesive. But something like this is very intricate that you need some help, <laughs> um, that you could easily overdo it or not get enough adhesive. This is a lifesaver for that kind of thing. And it, really, you just make your paper sticky first and then you'll be able to um, just peel and stick. So the rest of this that has that sticky on, don't waste that, don't throw that away. You can die cut other things, use all of this because it's all now sticky back paper. So I can use this for other things, even if I just wanna like stamp something on here and, and cut it out. Okay, do we have any questions for them? Uh, does Craft Warehouse sell the iCraft sticky dots envelope slash sheets? I dot, let me, let me read it. Yeah. Renee, no, we do not have the iDot crust for envelope. No. What did she say? Okay. Yeah, Renee, I, I have seen, we have had that in the past, but I don't think we have that item right now. Oh, but we didn't do the sponge thing. Oh yeah. The spongy guy. <laughs> this is, let me get this out of the way. This is a fairly new adhesive to Craft Warehouse. This is um, a glue sponge. When you first get this, the glue will have migrated to the bottom of the sponge. So you wanna turn it upside down, like just for like overnight. So all the glue will be at the top. And then when you're not using it, you can turn it upside down. So essentially this is like a plastic Tupperware container with a sponge in it that is saturated with a liquid glue. And this is really intended for paper. It's um, a PVA adhesive, so it will not wrinkle your paper at all. And it is non-toxic. It dries clear, it doesn't wrinkle. And you can and you can glue over other things. It's perfect for like die cuts or delicate materials. So, just like I was using, I was showing you different methods of of, of glue for this. 
this would be a good glue for this kind of a thing too. So you just take the lid off and you just saturate it in there and then not saturate, but you push down so the bottom gets adhesive. Kind of like very much like a, a mailing sponge that you that moistens the back of an envelope for you. So you don't have to lick that stuff. <laughs> this is this would this is that same kind of idea but with glue. So you would just press that in there and then it would when you pick it up it would have adhesive on it, then you could stick it onto paper. So it's good good for paper to paper. And it lasts a really long time as long as you keep the lid on it. And with that, you'd probably want to use tweezers. Yeah, tweezers would be a good handy thing for that. But anyway. also with this, what don't, I found this out the hard way, is that mine got stuck like this, where it was stored on its side. If that happens, change it back to where it's laying flat as fast as you can, because mine happened to have the glue escape around the sides of it. So it's not a hundred percent solid seal. Okay, so it needs to be this way or this way. Yeah, not that way. <laughs> yeah, don't have it sideways. Okay. So there's two more things that are not adhesive, but that will save you that I want to talk about. One of them is this guy. Who knows what this is? It's it's lightweight. It's fairly stiff, kind of rubbery feeling. Mine is fairly dirty. You mean I loved it and used it? You can find it in usually in scrapbooking sections, or you can find it in painting sections. Mm -hmm. And it is this, the adhesive pickup square. So what this is, is an adhesive remover. I'm gonna put a couple different kinds of adhesive down. So this is an eraser for glue. Yes, it removes glue, that's right. So see how mine is kind of got, is all dirty and gummy? That's because I've used it and loved it. If you do not lose this, this one will last you your whole life. If it gets really bad, you can trim the edges with scissors, with like utility scissors. You can pull off the icky stuff, but you can use it to literally say, oops, I did not mean to get glue there and rub it right off. That was the dot one. And this is a tape one that I am, simply just rubbing back and forth and pulling up that adhesive. It's not marring the paper at all. And it's totally removing all of the glue. So you see I turn it back and forth sometimes because it gets the glue gets rubbed up on there. So I'm, I'm actually removing a lot more glue than you would normally have a oopsie of. <laughs> but you just pull off that extra bit like that gunk and then you can keep going until you get it all off. Did you want to say something? So I normally use it with masking fluid. So when I'm doing a painting, I have to mask off a section. So that way I'm not getting my paint into the next area. So then hmm. once that's dry, I'll go in with the glue eraser and I'll take it up and it doesn't mar my picture at all. And we're talking like on watercolor paper? Uh huh. Okay, total, my paper is totally salvaged. It is not, there's no stain, there's no paper removed. It's totally good to go. You need this guy for sure in your life. It is magical. Yes, magic thing, yes. <laughs> okay, and the other thing I wanna talk about that is not an adhesive, but that is also magical. Do we have this open? Yes, we do. Is, da -da -da, undo. Yeah, ours that's open is the old package design. Yeah, this is the new package design. This is the old one, but they're the same thing. So um, it comes with this little scraper tool thingy, which is removable. Um, this, what this is, is it, I know it says remover, but really what this is, is a neutralizer. This will take the, the sticky adhesive, and this is adhesive from things like tape or um, stickers, um, Things like that. This isn't. This is not for like super glue. But this is for labels on a box. Have you ever tried to peel off the labels on a box because you want to reuse it, or you just don't want to recycle one with your name on it and your address? Um, mason jars. Yeah, getting the stickers off me. Stormy goes mason jars. <laughs> Trying to get stickers off of things from a garage sale. Um, anything. This is your lifesaver. So you just saturate this over the adhesive and it will temporarily neutralize the adhesive under that sticky for you to be able to peel it up. 
and remove it. Here is what's awesome about this though. Let's say you put down a sticker where you didn't want it or you want to recycle a sticker that you really love this sticker, but you know, you want to move it somewhere else and you, you it's a one of a kind, you can't get another one, whatever the case is. Put this on it, let it saturate. It's very thin and it feels like oil. Don't be concerned, it's not oil. Once it's saturated, you're you can easily lift off your sticker in its entirety without ripping it. Let it air dry and the sticky will come back. Yeah, I'm telling you, this is a neutralizer, not a, I know it says removes and it does remove self-sticking stuff, but it doesn't remove the sticky. It just neutralizes it so you can pick it up and move it. It's also great for um, those people that have unknowingly put photos in those magnetic albums. You know what I'm talking about? They call them magnetic. I know Stormy's giving me a look like, what? <laughs> Back in the day, people used to have these albums that had the sticky sheet and they would put their photos in and close the sticky sheet. Well, over, and your dad has some in his closet we need to take care of. But, okay. but what's happening is those are full of acid and your photos are turning yellow over time. And it's, it's an, it, that acid is eating away like a cancer at your photos and you, they're just getting worse and worse. Once you remove them from that environment, they will be saved. They will not get any worse. Um, but they, if you just try to lift them off, sometimes they're so stuck tight that you can't help but rip the photo. This is photo safe, y'all. You can put this over your photos, your precious one-of-a-kind photos. It will neutralize that adhesive on the back of that, that sticky paper that it's on, and you can pull your photo up. Just let it air dry for a couple of minutes, and it will, or even seconds, this, this dries very quickly, and your photos will be saved. If you had a, if you went to Goodwill, found an amazing 100% silk blouse, and they put stickers on it, like a price tag, you can put this on there. It will look like oil, but it will totally evaporate and it will not ruin your silk. This stuff is amazing. Let me tell you a little trick that you can do with your friends. Next time you can, you can uh, socialize. <laughs> invite some friends over because it's going to be weird to carry this in your purse. So invite them to your house and bet them $50 that you can remove duct tape from toilet paper. Single ply. Toilet single paper. single ply the cheap stuff you're gonna put down a couple squares of your toilet paper stick down make a show of sticking down some duct tape over that toilet paper give it to somebody say can you remove and you know of course they're only gonna tear it and they're gonna be like you're, you look at you like you're crazy and make them bet you your 50 bucks and you're gonna earn some money tonight <laughs> and then take this off and saturate the tissue side of that duct tape tissue with this stuff and then it will just peel totally apart and then as soon as it evaporates you could still use the tissue and the duct tape will be sticky again what <laughs> what yes that's what undo can do also it can remove candle wax from carpet oh, yes that's an awesome that is an awesome thing to have just for that reason alone and here's a fun little tr bit of trivia the man who invented undo also invented the household game known as Twister. I don't know which one came first. <laughs> I'm guessing Twister because then he had to get unstuck. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, to, to recap really fast, if I, if I was going to suggest some items, things that are not glue, it would be undo, the pickup stick, and this precision tip for sure. This, because you're going to use it in all kinds of applications not just for paper crafting this because it erases things so easily and saves your saves your saves you mistakes this one's because it gives you that precision if for me personally i love this liquid glue but if you like to seal things or you're more artsy fartsy girl you're going to want this one um tape runners this is my personal favorite but this one definitely has its place my favorite this is stormy's favorite she wants to put it in there the plus um, glossy accents definitely has its place. Three in one we use all the time for crafting. The matte medium is really great for a glue pin. I like the zig two way. And you can never, you can never not have glue dots. I mean, they're just, they are just awesome. Uh, they're asking, and of course, but what Oh, I never covered vellum. You know why? Because if honestly, I have I have done every kind of vellum glue out there in the world. Don't do it. Don't fall for it. I'm telling you. 
Glue that is labeled as vellum is no better than a post-it note. Don't even bother with it. If you absolutely have to glue something that is vellum, at the very least, do yourself a favor and glue that vellum to something that is light colored. If you do that, then you can use a white or a clear glue stick. This one will work just great. But if you're, glue, if you're trying to put vellum, that see-through paper, onto a dark colored something, you're gonna see the glue every time. So what do I do in that case? I do anything but glue. So I would either punch holes and tie ribbon, punch holes and put brads or eyelets. If I can't do that, I'm gonna put photo corners. If I absolutely have to use a glue, I'm gonna put something on top of the vellum like a flower or ribbon or some kind of embellishment. And then I'm gonna hide a strong glue like this underneath of that embellishment so that you can't see it from the front. Last but not least, if I really don't wanna have an embellishment on the vellum, but I want it on a card, what I'm gonna do is cut the vellum a little bit bigger than the front of my card. Then I'm gonna put a strong adhesive like this one or this one on the overhang and then fold that overhang over the cardstock so that you cannot see any glue on the front. And I'm gonna have a, this, this piece of paper that opens like this or like this of the vellum, which is kind of like what like a, a, a store-bought card might look like that has vellum. But that is what I would do. If you can avoid using glue, avoid it. Vellum adhesives are honestly very low tack. It might look great the first time you use it, but um, after a couple of hours even, it's gonna fall apart. And, and I, like I said, you give somebody a card, they're gonna pull it off, right? Mm -hmm. I would try to do anything other than a glue. If I'm gonna do glue white or clear glue on a white and gluing it to a white or a, or a light colored paper, works pretty darn well without being able to see it. Some people like to do a spray adhesive or a Zyron where you're getting the full coverage of adhesive. The only reason that sort of looks okay is because you've, you've made the same kind of stain of glue across the entire surface. So the whole thing looks like that, so you're not really sure. Is that glue I'm seeing or what's wrong with this paper? So if you if you have an eye for seeing the glue stains, you're gonna see a glue stain if you use a spray or, or even a Zyron or even that stick it stuff. You can still see it. If you but if you need that edge to edge, something like a stick it or a spray will work, but you're gonna still be able to see it. So it's just easier. Don't use glue on vellum. That's my that's my two cents. Okay, did every did everybody learn at least one thing? Did everybody have, does everybody have at least one of these things that you need to buy for yourself? That's my goal. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for joining me today. I hope that you learned something and, had, and that this was worth your time. I'm happy to spend the afternoon with you. I look forward to doing this again in the future with something else. We're thinking about maybe alcohol link. Um, leave your comments below about what kind of... Um, other uh, projects or, or lives you'd like to do. We would like to do some projects and then we like to do some like um, question and answer type stuff too. So, okay. You learned a lot, time to go shopping, yay. <laughs> More than one tip, good, good. Okay, you guys, thank you so much. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.